Hey guys, YoungbloodFantasy92 here, and today we will discuss the Jonas Brothers. Now, judging that I am a major classic rock fan and a huge fan of the Beatles, you're probably expecting me to do a hater rant on the Jonas Brothers. Let me put this entirely in perspective. We had the Allman Brothers, we had the Doobie Brothers, we even had Big Brother and the Holding Company. Now we have the Jonas Brothers, a wannabe supergroup that represents everything the rock and roll genre is not. The only reason they became famous was because Disney thought it was necessary to throw a goddamn pity party for those three wannabe sellouts. They only had four albums throughout the course of their existence, and their most recent album produced mixed reviews. It's like the Jonas Brothers are trying to replicate the success of the Beatles, but in a more manufactured and forced sense. Every Jonas Brothers album seems to contain music that is forced, rather than coming from a creative gestalt. The Jonas Brothers are terrible singers, and their songwriting is heavily artificial. And the reason for this is because Disney controls these three puppets. Now let's talk about Nick Jonas's diabetes problem. Yes, type 1 diabetes is serious, and yes, the result is a hard road. But why is it that some of the fans use this as an excuse to not hate on the Jonas Brothers, please? Diabetes cannot be used as a barrier or an excuse. Listen, Tony Iommi, the guitarist for Black Sabbath, lost two of his fingers in a factory accident. But he didn't whine or bitch or have his fans attack others for this simple fact. Instead, he covered it up with an artificial fingers. Neil Young, who was a member of Buffalo Springfield and Crosby, Stills, and Nash, was diagnosed with diabetes and suffered from a bout of polio, causing the left side of his body to be weakened. But did he, did he whine about it? No. Why else would he create albums such as Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere and Harvest? Because he wanted to demonstrate his talent. And I don't think we have any fans of Neil Young who bitch about when someone criticizes him and uses his diabetes as a defense. The argument is pointless, useless, and a waste of words. So to you Jonas fan brats, shut the hell up. Now a large constituency of the Jonas Brothers fans out there firmly believe that they are talented singers and they are the best thing to happen to them since sliced bread. Here is how these three pea brains became famous, okay? Their first album, It's About Time, covered songs. Song covers are usually not terrible unless you're covering My Generation and your Hilary Duff. But anyway, the Jonas Brothers first decided to cover stuff from Disney Mania 4. Sure, covering Disney songs. That's a smart move there. We heard the crap already, but hey, we can hear this crap again, this time in a more inferior form. What a concept! And later in the year, they covered another Disney song from The Little Mermaid. Yes, they can cover whatever they want, but they elect to cover stuff from Disney, so just so they can pander to them, and brown nose their way into notoriety. Oh yeah, I forgot. They were dropped from their label. To make it even worse, they sign on to a dis different record label and continue to cover Disney songs. The next Disney Mania compilation was again subjected to the wonderful covering skills of these Jonasses. And then they mooch off of Hannah Montana's popularity when they dis debut on the show with the same name. Last I heard, Nick Jonas had a thing for Miley Cyrus. Sorry, delusional fangirls, Nick is goddamn taken. And even if he parted ways with Miley, he would probably still have the presence of mind not to marry any one of you ridiculous, spazzy, annoying fangirls who simply dream of Nick Jonas day and night, and night and day. In fact, none of these idiots, no matter how inferior they are, simply would not decide to marry any one of you lunatic fangirls out there who don't give a shit about what real music is. <sighs> anyway. The only reason they became famous was because they mooshed off the success of Disney and Hannah Montana. The fangirls then became obsessed with the band's appearance and how handsome they were, and that they decided to make them the hottest boy band going. And in conjunction with their newfound success and Disney successfully throwing a pity party for them, we have the Jonas Brothers as they now are today. They are doing concert after concert after concert, all engineered by Disney, and all in the process of making these three people even more big-headed than they already are. Also, I'm amazed that the Jonas Brothers went to great lengths to cover the Beatles. Yes, in their third album, they cover Hello Goodbye, and with terrible accuracy. I have heard the whole song in its length. It's a terrible cover of the Beatles. To think that they had the thought of ever being part of a rock and roll simply baffles me to no end. These three people on there, who yell on stage, acting like they are the cat's pajamas, throwing themselves away to a bunch of fangirls who have absolutely no idea what real music is or the meaning of the word criticism, are people who just plain pathetic. The Beatles got their start by being discovered by Brian Epstein. He thought they had talent. The Jonas Brothers decide that the only way to become popular is to mooch off the powerhouse status of Disney and befriend the other music destroyers out there, such as Miley Cyrus and Demi Lovato, so they can have a piece of the pie. Now I'll stop being critical for a second and try to look at this rationally. I'm going to show you a picture of a singles album. Here. Look at it for a second. Do you see the two song titles on the album? Look at them very closely. This is a challenge to you Jonas fan brats out there. I want you to listen to these two songs on this album. Both of these two songs, they are perhaps the cornerstone of this band's work. 
They are the tunes that everyone remembers from them. This is a challenge I pose to you fan brats. Listen to these two songs. If you fail to listen to them, yet still bitch about the Jonas Brothers to me, then you have not given this issue a fair shake. You have admitted to me that by not listening to these songs, you don't know what good music is. Compare these two songs to any Jonas Brothers song on any album. Kindly do. Then you can see the Jonas Brothers for who they really are. People who have con been controlled by Disney to manufacture music that is completely terrible in quality. Also, I want to talk to you guys about the latest Jonas Brothers album. This album got mixed reviews from critics out there. Some of these criticisms are very interesting. One of these people complained that there is too much instrumentation on there and that the Jonas Brothers overthought and overproduced this album. This reminds me of the soft parade by The Doors. This album was criticized to be The Doors with too much going on at once. The only song that there anyone knows is Touch Me. Every other album that The Doors has done has at least two or three songs that are considered catchy, memorable, or incredible to hear. This album is the exception to the rule, and after that, The Doors reverted to basics and continued pumping hits until Jim Morrison's death. This album by the Jonas Brothers clearly shows that they are steadily declining in terms of songwriting and instrumentation. It is clear that their notoriety is going to their heads. They already have a show on the Disney Channel now, titled Jonas, absolutely no surprise, in which the Jonas Brothers do inane stupid things while their fangirls obsess over them. That's pretty fucking creative, imitating real life. Can you think of anything more creative than this? The Beatles were in movies, sure, such as A Hard Day's Night and Help, in which they did whatever they pleased for certain scenes. And hell, they were also chased by their fangirls. But does anyone know How I Won the War starring John Lennon or The Magic Christian by Ringo Starr? These are definite characters here. The Jonas Brothers never go into character in this sitcom. This is why the Jonas Brothers are becoming a one-trick pony, because all they can do is music and they are unable to branch out. They only stick to one thing and live with it. I call this Disney Syndrome. It affected Hannah Montana, Everyone in High School Musical, the Jonas Brothers in Camp Rock, and newer faces such as Demi Lovato. Bands such as Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple Queen, Cream, The Who, and yes, The Beatles, all demonstrated that they were in the classic rock business to do what they wanted to do and not to be controlled by puppets. They decided that they wanted to make music from their hearts and minds and not from the penny-pinching idiots at Disney. This is why their music is entertaining, awesome, and memorable. They were given the creative freedom to do what they wanted to do and not what they were supposed to do. Albums such as A Night at the Opera, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and Who's Next are albums in which the bands have placed enough effort to make these albums the gold of classic rock. The Jonas Brothers do nothing but sit around and wait for Disney to tell them what to do. Then all of a sudden they get ideas and make them into songs and albums. The criticism will only increase. The fangirls will only get more and more insane, and the band will get only more and more obscure. Pretty soon, they will disappear off the face of music for good, which is what I hope will happen. They are nothing but posers. They think they are members of rock, sure, but they really are a poor excuse for rock and are nothing but a boy band that will all go away as fast as they came to be. At least, I wish for that to happen. And the Jonas Brothers fan brats out there, to the Jonas Brothers fan brats out there, who think they are so hot, who think they can marry all three of these jerks, and who attack those who don't like the Jonas Brothers, shut the hell up. Until we have concrete evidence that these posers are good, your attacks are in vain. Tell us why the Jonas Brothers are the best people ever, or shut the hell up and don't say a word. Because if you're going to be a spaz and go crazy over every single comment that criticizes the Jonas Brothers, then I suggest you either get used to it, or leave the internet for good. No one wants to see any more fangirls or simple-minded fools populating the internet. The Jonas Brothers suck, and you know it. This is Young Blood Fantasy 92 and ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time.